Welcome, welcome, welcome everybody to another great episode of Real Life Matters. And of course, I am your host, D Boss. And um, in case you guys are not watching me on um, Care Vision, we're in 28 different countries. I come on Monday to Friday, weeknight, prime time night, between 10 p.m. Eastern Standard Time and 12 a.m. So if you don't catch me on Care Vision, where we are, we're in, I'm in Canada on Bell 5, Channel 658, also through the various um, cable networks. And if you didn't catch me there, you can go to my YouTube channel, which is D Boss Networks, and you subscribe, share, the whole thing. You can watch all the wonderful guests that I've interviewed over the past uh, seven years. So what we're going to do is I'm going to hear something from our sponsors, and we're going to be right back with our next special guest. Special guest. Welcome to your vital steps to better health and fitness. I'm Joanne James. Today we're talking about preventing injuries and falls in older adults. Each year thousands of older adults fall as a result of things that they could actually avoid. So when an older adult or if you have an older adult in your family, make sure that they have proper footwear, well fitted shoes and not walking around in slippers and socks, which can increase their risk for falling. Also, if you can, make sure that they use their assisted devices. Canes or walkers are there to provide stability and support. And also, make sure that there's adequate lighting in their homes as well. Most older adults fall walking from the bedroom to the bathroom because there's no light on. So, keep in mind that staying hydrated to avoid dizziness and weakness is also important. So make sure that exercise is part of a regular routine for an older adult. I'm Joanne James, and this has been your Vital Steps to Better Health and Fitness. See you next time. Thank you, Joanne James, for that, you know, better health tip, you know, and that's, you know, that's very important for people when they're, you know, mature, I say. So, you know, that, that tip, you know, make sure lighting, make sure you don't have slippery stuff, you know, make sure everything is lit, as she just said. But now we're going to introduce you a very special guest that is, um, she is, she manages the band. She manages the band and she also manages this, the place where she's, they have a lot of functions. So we're going to let her tell you which, which band she manages. And with no further ado, I introduce to you Nadine McNulty. Thank you, DeBoss. It's a pleasure to be here with you. And uh, I'm Nadine McNulty. I'm the artistic director of the Tuki Music Society here in Toronto, as well as I'm the manager of Okavango African Orchestra. We present concerts and events throughout the year, including a very special festival at Harbour Front Centre called Havari Africa, which is held annually in August. Wow. Okay. So we're going to rewind a little bit. <laughs> so here at Real Life Matters, we like to know where everybody's cultural background is and where they come from. Yes. Yeah, so I'm, I'm based here in Toronto and okay. um, born here in Canada. And um, I would say okay. that uh, our organization is also based here. I work with a diverse team of people. It is an African arts organization, and we've been presenting African arts over the past 10 years, and wow. actually longer than 10 years, about 12 years. And I started out uh, years ago. I was the artistic director for Music Africa and Afrofest for a number of years, for about 12 years here in Toronto. Okay. Yes. Um, with the founders of Afrofest. I'm not one of the founders, but I was there with the original board. And also, okay. I also host, I have, I co-host a radio program here in Toronto called Kiribuni, which is on Sundays and it features African artists from the continent and the diaspora. So my background, oh, I worked. Afro Boonies. <laughs> yeah, so I worked, um, for many years with African artists, starting out in Kenya uh, many years ago. And also um, I spend a lot of time uh, working and traveling throughout Africa, different countries, mostly. So East where Africa. have you been? Um, okay. Well, okay, so if you wanna know, there's a lot of countries. I've been in Kenya, Tanzania, Uganda, Ethiopia, 
I've been in Capo Verde, I've been in Morocco, Tunisia, Rwanda, and Congo, and also South Africa and Namibia. So I've been in maybe about 12 African countries, but I spent the majority of time in East Africa, in Kenya, um, and Ethiopia lately a lot, yes. All right. So what made you want to, you know, study um, African arts and stuff like that? Like, you know, you just don't get up and say, oh, you know what, I'm going to do this. <laughs> yeah, I think it started, it started many years ago. I was always interested in it from the time I was young, reading books about it, learning about different cultures. I was very interested. And so when I ended up traveling in East Africa, I decided I'm going to stay here for long periods of time. And uh, at the time I was, it was prior to when I started with Music Africa. So I was doing work over there. I worked for a record label. I also was working with a lot of African artists. I was doing photography and also um, different programs over there. I worked with a child um, with an orphanage, different, different things, but I was always interested in people and I spent vast amounts of time in villages and rural areas as opposed to the city but i was based in nairobi uh, kenya and um i just was so interested and i i started working over there actually in um in arts also oh, after and, resi you know, resided there yeah in kenya and then when i came back to canada um i was around volunteering with many organizations but it was music africa that invited me to join their board of directors. And I joined and I spent uh, 12 years with them. And uh, yeah, up until the time that Music Africa moved from Queens Park to Woodbine. So I was there during the time at Queens Park. And I've also worked with other organizations here, mostly um, arts organizations. I've been on boards and things like that. And I'm also a member of the uh, Juno Submission Committee for submissions to um, Global. So wow. that's something I've been doing for a few years and it, I'm very eager and I love to encourage people to get involved. And also I've done some mentoring through the radio station and also through our organization. So training a lot of African Canadian youth and actually finding work for them within our organization. That's our priority is hiring African Canadian youth. Uh, to work okay. and that is our priority and our festival has probably 30 volunteers and they're all mostly African Canadian youth so they're people who are interested in the arts some of them have come on to work now in our organization okay so you're really like you know you're out there advocating absolutely for, yeah. for jobs um, not just uh, you know visibility which is something that is really needed. Um, you know, I would say African and Canadian artists and arts and even people in all sectors, they're definitely underrepresented in the society. Um, there's been a lot of obstacles, there's been racism, there's been other issues that have made it very difficult for them within this Canadian society. So okay. I, I've always believed that it's better to look for ways to bring people up, build skills, but also not just skills and volunteering, but actually um, helping find employment, which is very important, so that there will be a continuation. We're not here forever. I would like to see some African Canadian youth take over work that has been done already by some people in our community and see the youth get involved in arts because it is a very difficult job working in the arts to pay and um, employment is very the prospects are very it's very limited so that's really what i'm most interested in is now looking for those people and encouraging them and also working with artists here, um, many newcomers, many artists who have come here, they've come from places where they were very well known and famous in their own right. They come here and all of a sudden they got to start at the bottom again. And it's very difficult. There's a lot of mental health issues. There's um, depression because, you know, you, you were somebody and where you might have been living, you could have been a very famous artist. There are so many African Canadian artists based here in Canada and many that have migrated from somewhere and they were actually very well known back there and having an, a living 
they come here and all of a sudden they face all these challenges because, you know, it's very difficult to get anywhere in the arts here. And also with language challenges, with racism, it, it makes it very difficult. So that's the work that we try to do with our organization. And we do have good people on board who are mentoring and helping all the time people that come here and face challenges we will call them we will visit we will try to say okay let's help you write your biography let's do all that and we don't um, charge money for that we basically do it just wow. on our own time yeah so that's okay. that's the work that i've been doing <laughs> Not just and me, that's, and that's there's, other, <laughs> there's other people behind it too that i want to i want to also say you know, it takes okay. a lot of people to hold hands together to help people. And yes. I'm not the only person. Yeah. Okay. All right. So how do people get involved if they want to get involved in your organization? Like, what do they, what do they have to do? Yeah. All they have to do really simply is get in touch with us. We have events all the time. Any young people okay. that would like to get involved and even would like to attend you know, a concert or attend something and they don't have the income, they can always give us an email, send us an email, let us know, and we will invite them wherever we can. And also for the festival in the summer, August, um, we also encourage students, any students that need time and need voluntary time, we're very open and it's all on the spot training. There's no, you don't need to come with a lot of skills or even we've got people on our board and our organization that speak many languages. And so wow. it's an issue with that. So if somebody is not good with English or French and they want to come and volunteer, we will put them in a position that they will feel that they're comfortable and welcome and um, just get them involved. So, yeah, sending us an email is just simple. It's our organization, music at yahoo.com. They can get in touch. And um, we're very open to talking to them and seeing what they're really looking for. What are their goals and what would they like to do? And as I, we do work in arts, it's quite a specific area of arts. We focus okay. on our main goal is on African Canadian arts. That's, that's our main okay. goal. That's what we're looking for. Okay. So it's not just an influx of people not coming there and they're not related to what they're supposed to do. You know what I mean? <laughs> you don't wanna... No. And we want to make sure that we prioritize them. We need to prioritize them because that's what it's about. And also many of them don't get other opportunities elsewhere. And so we want to make sure that they have that opportunity. If we can, you know, we try to take on as many as we can. And at the festival, okay. usually we can take on quite a few people because it is a three day festival and it's absolutely free to the public. We pay all of our artists. That's another priority. Everybody wow. like that perform at the festival we don't ask people to perform for free we don't say it's about promotion or you know you're we're going to promote you because they need to pay their bills and their rent and promotion is there anyway but um that's one thing that we've made very very um specific that's about. Really, really good. it's free to the public everyone can attend but at the same time, we're paying each and every artist, each dancer, each musician, uh, workshop leaders, uh, filmmakers, anybody who is at the festival. And it's a multidiscipline festival. So there's music, dance, film, there's um, workshops. Even um, we have now um, some children activities, things like that and crafts. So it's absolutely free. And that's every year in August at Harborfront. Right up well, there, Anna. Right up there. And, you, <laughs> and you'll get and you'll get that overflux of people that came for Caravan that stayed, and they'll be able to go to that too. So I and guess that happens all the time. Yeah, and we wanted to align it with other things rather than be competitive nature. That's why Afrofest and there's other festivals in June, July. We made August so that we have it at a time when we're not having other things because we need to see more of this type of arts and African arts presented as opposed to any kind of competitive nature. So we also work with other arts organizations as partners. Um, we have um, a lot of partnerships, community uh, partnerships, 
and that's something that we also offer um, promotional health things like that with other organizations that have events and the radio program also promotes um, these events for free well you just promoted these events for all for people all over <laughs> so everybody <laughs> will know about it and you guys and you have to come back closer to when you have um, afro fest so that then you be out there then the people can really come out and then of course they're going to be looking forward for it now too <laughs> and if they want to be part of it they can also talk to you now yeah okay as i'm not any longer on the board of music africa i still go there every year to afrofest but our festival in august we will definitely invite you you will be part of it and i look forward to that and i want to thank you for taking this opportunity to interview me because it's wonderful to be able to share some of this information especially with a great uh show like yours oh thank yeah well this is real life matters and this is the matters and this is what matters to you so and it make to make it matter for everybody else so they can attend you know so this is why i do the show that's why i just don't do it's not just about entertainers it's about all types of people and all types of organizations and brands and stuff so i'm glad that you came today and you told us about the organization because i didn't think everybody knew about the artists getting paid you guys looking to hire people you know people of african descent you know people probably didn't know that they probably knew that okay you hire some people but you didn't know so now they're going to know the particulars and if they fall into that artistic background then they can come to you yes absolutely and we're interested in all people of all walks of life and yes also open up our programs to the public so it's not just for a specific community it's for everyone yes all right so are there any shout outs that you want to give to your people your sponsors or anyone yeah i just want to say thank you to all of the team at the tuki music we've got some wonderful people there i want to thank cherno sumari who is our production coordinator also oti moi oyemu who is the executive director and also i want to thank people like uh, saba aspa who is our marketing person and also sylvia forrest who is an amazing lady who is our hospitality coordinator there's so many people i can thank but i just want to thank those main people also i want to thank edward olson who is our theater guy and he's also an artistic associate with us and um, there's a lot of young people and youth also that i could thank and i just want to say generally thank you to all of our young volunteers who have been part of the organization for um you know even if they just joined in august and they started volunteering and uh, i'm very proud of them i'm happy that they are um with us all right all right so you just give um everybody the information where they can contact you so if they want to be involved or find out more information yeah, so you can just go to our website. It's the easiest way. You go to batukimusic.com and it's B A T U K I music.com. You can find more info or you can tune in to 89.5 FM on Sundays from 3 p.m. to 5 p.m. and listen to Carrie Booney. We have uh, two hours of amazing music. And uh, yeah, you can, you can find us there. <laughs> Well, I'm pretty sure a lot of people will be tuning in now. Now they know. <laughs> hey, thank you All right. so much. We appreciate it. It was just wonderful. All right. Well, thank you, Nadine. And, you know, you guys come back. You have something you want to keep the doors open. Thank you so much. Okay. I that. Yes. Bye. All right. I thank, I thank everybody for watching today. Bye-bye.